Welcome to the weekly video podcast for the PBS series E Squared. This exclusive online program will take you beyond the episode you just watched and deeper into the world of sustainable design. In the same way where the era of cheap fuel is ending, by no coincidence, the era of cheap food is probably ending because this food system is so dependent on fossil fuel. There's several reasons that we've seen this, this crisis in food prices worldwide. The first is ethanol. The fact is that we made a decision, not we, President Bush made a decision in 2006 to make a big bet on ethanol and he began subsidizing it 51 cents a gallon and putting a tariff on imported ethanol and the result drove up corn prices. When you drive up prices of one grain, farmers growing other grains rush to grow the high price grain. So suddenly there wasn't enough wheat or soy. Suddenly all grains were in short supply and you have this problem. I think mixing the food economy and the uh, energy economy as we have is a big mistake. And that's where we are. We're in a situation where American SUVs are competing for farmland and grain with people in the developing world. And you can bet who's winning. It's the SUV. You can find arguments saying that the subsidization of corn production is environmentally sensible because it leads to ethanol supposedly cleaner burning fuel. The fact of the matter is ethanol that is made from corn is far less efficient than ethanol that is made from sugarcane. Sugarcane could be imported, but the reason why it's not is there's an enormous tariff preventing that sugarcane from coming into this country. And complementing that tariff are the subsidies for the, the corn industry. So it would make no economic sense whatsoever. The incentives are clearly in the direction of making ethanol from corn, which is environmentally far more wasteful than making ethanol from sugarcane. The other reason that food prices have gone up, though, uh, is because this food system is so in entirely dependent on fossil fuel. So that when you see this spike in fuel prices that we've had, lo and behold, fertilizer prices go up. Diesel for your tractor goes up. The food processing costs go up. If it takes 10 calories of fossil fuel energy to produce one calorie of food energy, well, in such a system, oil prices are going to have a huge impact on the price of food. And that's the other thing we've seen happen. At the end of the day, higher oil prices is great news for local economies. It's great news because we're going to be doing a lot more energy efficiency. We're going to be using our non-local cars much less. And we're going to be producing more goods and services locally for local consumption. And Walmart production that's 10 or 15,000 miles away in China, carrying that stuff to the United States is simply no longer going to be cost effective. Even, by the way, if the labor prices in Walmart are close to zero, which they just about are, because already we're at a point where transportation costs are outswamping the tiny labor costs. The big thing that needs to be done is to rewrite the farm bill and change the set of incentives, the rules by which we play the food game in this country. And I'm not a policymaker, so I don't know exactly how you do that. I mean, better minds than me can figure it out, but I do know where the incentives have to go. And the incentives have to change from a food system concerned with quantity to one concerned with quality. We need incentives for taking care of the land and not just producing as much food as possible. We need incentives to relocalize the food system. We need incentives for farmers to convert to organic, because it takes three years to convert. And in that three-year period, you have to follow organic rules, but you can't get organic prices. We should help farmers with that bridge. There, there are many, many things we need to do. But if I were president, the first thing I would do is rip out the White House lawn and put in a vegetable garden. Because that sends a very important message that, you know, the sun is still shining down on our houses and our own lands, and we can make use of that to feed ourselves. For more information about E Squared, visit our website at pbs.org. Thank you for watching this weekly podcast from the E Squared Transport Series. 
We're proud to bring you these stories about the engineers, designers, and architects who are using technology to help create a more sustainable world.